Let me click it, bro. At the end of every unit, your teacher has a chance to teach a lesson about other lessons that in their context to enhance. But what do you suppose our teacher has us do? He skips the lesson and makes us present a digital LEQ. Elocution needs historical evidence. Reason that can cooperate in advance. A compass thesis that Dr. John P. would admire. Then we drop the screencast like a single, it is fire. You ready for this, bro? Okay. Student created stream, cast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've had all the John Green and Smith Heimler you can bear. If we have the most views by 10 p.m. Eastern on the fifth day, we'll earn 500 bonus points, which virtually guarantees next. Okay. Without much more, much more, much more fanfare or ado, we present, present, present our digital LEQ. Okay, guys, so getting right into the video, we are going to start off with some big idea questions. These are questions you want to keep in mind throughout the course of the video. So, the first question is, why is movement vital in the spread of diseases during the different time periods? The second question is, what is the difference in how the diseases were spread? And lastly, how did human perspective compare slash contrast during the occurring events? Essentially, our thesis is centered around the spread of epidemic diseases within Eurasia in the 14th century and America in the 16th century. Both are similar in regards to the extensive death toll. However, the epidemics contain different forms of diseases and a difference in origin. Therefore, it is overall contrasting. In the 14th century, an epidemic plague known as the Black Death spread through Eurasia. In the 16th century, smallpox, measles, typhus, and many other diseases spread to the Americas via the Columbian Exchange. In Eurasia, a bacterium known as Uranus pestis was spread through the air and formed bites of infected pests. This ended up causing rapid death. Nonetheless, the deaths of these citizens benefited the economic economy since it limited the competition for employment. But in the Americas, Europeans brought over deadly bacteria, which ended up weakening the region and made them more susceptible for concurization. This historical evidence is on a statement made by King James I, who was then the current ruler of New England and his reaction on the death of Native Americans that died from the Columbia Exchange. As you can see, he described it as a wonderful plague that has resulted in the other destruction, devastation, and depopulation of that whole territory. We chose this quote from King James I as historical evidence because he stated that the plague caused the depopulation of an entire Native American territory, which basically emphasizes the massive death of Native Americans during the Columbia Exchange, which strengthens our statement that the spread of epidemic diseases in America during the 16th century caused extensive death. To support our thesis and overall claim, there is an excerpt from The Black Death, a primary source, and as you can read, it entails about the death toll within the epidemic in Eurasia. And on the right hand, we have a primary source from The History of Smallpox by James Carrick Moore. And this also talks about the death toll and how it took place within America. Both pieces of evidence provided allow you to see how death toll took part in each epidemic. Each quote being a primary source within a different time period and area for each epidemic shows just how contrasting each one was. So, moving along, as mentioned in the thesis, one of the reasons why the spread of epidemic diseases in the 14th century and in the 16th century differs so greatly is because how the diseases were transferred. The two images shown demonstrate the interaction between Christopher Columbus and the Americas and America versus the interaction between those who were infected by the virus and those who weren't in Eurasia. The epidemic in America was caused by human interaction, while in Eurasia, diseases were spread by animals and people could come in physical contact with one another without receiving the disease. Movement is vital in the spread of disease because it determines the surface area covered by the spreading disease. As illustrated in the map, the movement of the carrier influenced how wide the disease spreads. In the 16th century, since the Columbian Exchange required movement from one continent to another, the disease spread from Europe to South America. 
However, in the 14th century, the animal care did not have the means to travel long distance, therefore the disease was confined to a single area. In the case of the Black Death, which prospered in Eurasia during the 14th century, the disease was contained in one region because its carriers, which were animals, did not have the means to move from one continent to another. However, in the case of smallpox and measles, which prospered in South America during the 16th century, it was brought over by European explorers because its carriers, which were humans, had the means to move from one continent to another. Therefore, the movement of the carriers impacted the movement of the disease. The map demonstrates the differences in surface area covered by the disease. In the first map, it shows how in the 16th century, the disease was able to spread from one continent to another due to water transportation. However, in the second map, it shows how the disease was able to stay in one area because its carriers did not have the means to move around. The theme presented in this scenario is theme one, which was human and the environment. The environment affected the individuals who would be infected and how far the disease was able to spread. So let's go back to the big idea questions. Why is movement vital in the spread of disease during a different time period? What was the difference in how the disease was spread? How did human perspective compare or contrast during the occurring events? Take a moment to pause this video and write down your answers. A possible answer choice to number one could have been, the movement of the carriers were different, therefore the surface area covered by the diseases were also different. During the 16th century, the carriers traveled from one continent to another, which spread the disease further away from the origin. In the 14th century, the carriers were limited to its region, therefore they were only able to move within that area. That contained to the disease spread furthering out. For the second question, you could have written, in the 16th century, viruses were carried through humans, which led to a larger infected population due to those who traveled. In the 14th century, however, there was limited carrier travel since animals moved through smaller surfaces. An acceptable answer for question three could have been, the spread of disease during the 14th and 16th century differed. However, the human reaction to the occurring events were very similar. It still caused devastation and sadness to those impacted by the spreading. So here you will see a list of sources that we use throughout our project. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.